Most of us live fairly mundane lives. We wake up in the same bed every day, we go to the same job every day, eat generally the same food every day, and end every day in the same bed that we woke up in. We get used to these patterns. We come to expect things to happen in a certain way. It's how we make sense of the world and our place in it. But from time to time, something crazy happens, or you hear about something crazy happens that just seems impossible. Like you hear these stories all the time about somebody that, you know, has a dream about a loved one or somebody that they hadn't thought about in years and then the next day they find out that that person died overnight or died the previous day and you hear stuff like that and it's just like, that seems impossible. Like how could something like that just happen by chance? But is it impossible? Or do we just not understand probability very well? Today we're going to take a look at 10 amazing coincidences and just ask ourselves, is there something else going on here? Our ancestors lived in a world of magic and mysticism, where everything could be explained away by the actions of gods or demons, where there were no coincidences. Today, of course, we have a much better understanding of how the world works, but we're still not immune to magical thinking. Because sometimes crazy things happen that are really difficult to explain away with logic, as these 10 stories show. Number one, are you sure we're not the same person? Ever seen somebody that looks just like you? King Umberto I of Italy did. He was dining in a restaurant when he noticed that the owner looked quite a bit like him. So he got started talking to him and found out there were a lot of other things they had in common. They were both born on March 14, 1844 in the same town. They each married a woman named Margarita. The restaurant owner even opened his business on the same day that Umberto was crowned. Kind of freaky, but then on July 29th in 1900, Umberto learned that the restaurant owner had been killed by a gunshot in a mysterious accident. And later that same day, Umberto was killed by a stranger in the crowd while walking through the city of Monza. By the way, pro tip, if somebody is living a parallel life to yours and you find out that they died, just stay home that day. Number two, two girls, one balloon. So King Umberto had his doppelganger. So did Laura Buxton. Laura Buxton was a 10 year old girl living in Staffordshire, England in 2001. And she wanted to do a little experiment. She tied a little piece of paper to a helium balloon with her name and her address on it. And she set it aloft just to, just to see where it would land. Kind of like a message in a bottle, but with helium. The balloon floated 140 miles and landed in the backyard of another 10 year old girl, also named Laura Buxton. The two girls decided to meet, and when they did, they were kind of wearing the same outfit, a pink shirt and jeans. And then it kept getting weirder. They both had the exact same hairstyle, they were both the same height, and they both had the exact same pets, a gray rabbit, a black lab, and a guinea pig. At that point, I think I would almost wish I hadn't met this other person. That's just, that's just too creepy. Number three, return to childhood. Children's book author Anne Parrish was traveling in Paris, France in the 1920s and took a stop at a bookstore. And while there, she ran across a book called Jack Frost and Other Stories, which was her favorite book when she was a child. So at a fit of nostalgia, she decided to buy it. Later on that day, her husband was looking through the book, noticed that the previous owner, some kid, had written their address on, uh, on the inside of the front cover. And that address read, Anne Parrish, 209 North Weber Street, Colorado Springs. It was the book she had when she was a kid. A book that somehow made its way into Paris, somehow wound up on that bookshelf that she just happened to go to and happened to walk past and see it. My bet is she never got rid of it again. Number four, no place like home. Here's another interesting coincidence involving a writer. So in the movie, The Wizard of Oz, the wizard was played by a guy named Frank Morgan. And he actually played a few different roles in that movie. He played a cab driver and he played a fortune teller as well. And for the fortune teller character, the costume department wanted a jacket that was kind of old and torn and tattered. So they went to a secondhand shop and found one that fit him there. So during filming, Morgan turned out the inside of one of his pockets and noticed that the previous owner had written their name in it. And that previous owner's name was L. Frank Baum. Isn't that crazy? They were both named Frank. Oh, and L. Frank Baum also wrote The Wizard of Oz. Frank Morgan thought it was just a joke that the costume department had played on him, but he actually tracked down uh, L. Frank Baum's widow who actually spoke to his tailor and found out, no, this was actually his jacket from way back in the day. Number five, you sunk my battleship. Back during World War I, hundreds of British civilian vessels were uh, transformed into military ships, and one of them that was done that way was the RMS Carmania. But in order to confuse the enemy and maybe to sneak past enemy lines, it was actually disguised as a German ship, specifically a German ship called the SMS Trafalgar. So in 1914, the Carmania saw some action off the coast of Brazil, and they sunk a German ship. The name of that German ship? The SMS Trafalgar. Even weirder is that the Germans kind of did a similar thing. They disguised some of their ships to look like British ships, and the Trafalgar was disguised to look like a British ship. Which British ship specifically? The RMS Carmania. Imagine you're on the Carmania disguised as the Trafalgar, watching the Trafalgar sink while disguised as the Carmania. 
It's kind of like watching your own ship go down. It's kind of a nightmare. Number six, who's for dinner? Edgar Allan Poe is known worldwide as the master of horror and macabre, but most of the works that he did were actually short stories and poems. He only published one full-length novel his entire life. It was published in 1838, and it was titled The Narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym of Nantucket. And part of its plot involves four shipwrecked sailors who have to resort to cannibalism to survive, so they actually eat one of the cabin boys, and the name of that cabin boy is Richard Parker. One of Poe's more heartwarming and life-affirming stories. Flash forward 50 years to 1884 in a real-life ship named the Minionette, uh, crashed off the coast of the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa. And in this crash, there were four survivors that lived on a lifeboat and had to resort to eating a cabin boy. And the name of that cabin boy, you guessed it, was Richard Parker. This event actually led to a really big trial in England that outlawed survival cannibalism. So if your name is Richard Parker, you can rest easy now. Number seven, death by eating. Here's another one about eating and death. So much eating and death in the coincidence world. Dainé Dutois was a South African astronomer who was giving a talk in 1981, and part of his talk was about how death can come for anybody at any time. You know, like astronomers usually talk about. Anyway, after the lecture, he popped a mint into his mouth, a mint that then slid down the back of his throat, went on to choke him to death, and he died right there in front of the lectern. Let's just be glad he didn't give a talk about comet impacts. Number eight, Bond, James Bond. This one's just kind of fun. In 1990, a student at Argo Ed High School was taking his general certificate of secondary education, and the number at the top of his little sheet that marked which one was his was 007. The name of this student? James Bond. I bet he was shaken by that, but not stirred. Number nine, plum pudding. As a teenager, the French poet Emile Duchamp was introduced to a certain dessert called plum pudding, and the guy who introduced him to it was an Englishman named Monsieur de Fugabu. How does the English guy sound more French than the French guy? And I guess he liked it because 10 years later, Duchamp was in Paris and they walked past a pastisserie and they had plum pudding in the window, and he said, that looks good, so he stepped in to have a bite. But when he orders it, he is disappointed to find out that they are actually out. They just sold their last piece to a gentleman in the back corner. Duchamp looks across the room, and lo and behold, it's Monsieur de Fogabu, just pounding that plum pudding. Quick note, there's no way I'm saying that name right. Sorry. Anyway, that, that's a neat coincidence, but it actually happens again. So several years later, Duchamp is at uh, this party, and they're serving plum pudding. And I'm guessing that plum pudding is not that popular. It's, it's a fairly rare dessert or something, because when he sees this, the first thing that he says to somebody is, uh, oh, I bet uh, Monsieur de Bourdieu is around. And somebody was like, what the hell does that mean? And he's like, well, i got to explain this whole story. So he explained the whole story as a joke, and they're like, ho, 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 you're so, you're so funny, Duchamp. And then they look at the door, and look who walks in. So the Fortic View walks in, uh, he's actually not even at the right party, he meant to go to a different dinner party, but I guess he just has like spidey sense about plum pudding, and he just had to walk in. And number 10, Eleanor Rigby. Eleanor Rigby obviously is a classic song, it's one of the best Beatles songs out there. It was written by Paul McCartney, and he claimed that he named it after Eleanor Braun, an actress at the time. And he said that the Rigby part of the name came from a store in Bristol called Rigby and Evans. However, in the 1980s, somebody pointed out a coincidence about this name that even made Paul McCartney think twice about it. Because there's a grave in a cemetery outside of St. Peter's Parish Church in Liverpool that is marked with the name Eleanor Rigby, a woman who died in 1930. And of course, any Beatles fan can tell you that they're from Liverpool. That's why they have those Liverpoolian accents. And uh, John and Paul actually used to hang out at this particular cemetery when they were teenagers. Now, Paul McCartney claims to have no specific memory of this headstone, but even he admits that, you know, it could have just been like a subconscious thing. Now, of course, these are just 10 out of countless numbers of amazing coincidences out there. If you have a favorite one that I didn't list here, feel free to talk about it in the comments below. There's like a dozen of them just around Kennedy and Lincoln alone. But that's kind of the whole point of this video. Crazy, unbelievable coincidences actually happen all the time. We are all one of seven billion people on this planet. And we all live a very singular experience in our lives. We don't see the whole system working, and we don't see all the variables. But when you take a step back and look at the entire system, you can realize that actually all of these can be explained away with math and probability. As an example, let's look at that Ann Parrish coincidence that I mentioned earlier. 
You can find a mathematical explanation of this story in the book Fluke, The Math and Myth of Coincidence by Joseph Mazur. He writes that the likelihood that Anne would be traveling to Paris in the summer of 1929 is about 0.1. She happened to be married to an industrialist, and Paris was one of the most popular destinations for Americans in the 1920s. She's also a writer, so the likelihood that she would go to a bookstore is not that low, it's 0.3. He says the hardest number to land on is how exactly her childhood book would wind up in that bookstore in Paris. But it turns out Anne's mother was friends with a painter named Marie Cassatt, and she probably passed the book on to her. And like many painters and artists, Mary moved to Paris. And when she died there, uh, her estate doled out her books to the English-speaking bookstores around there. And of course, Anne, being an English speaker from America, was in English-speaking bookstores. So Missouri actually gives that likelihood a 0.01. He writes, so the possibility of such a story happening would be something like P equals 0.1 times 0.3 times 0.1 equals 0 0.0003. In other words, the odds of it happening are 3,331 to one. Now that sounds like crazy odds, but according to Missouri, it's actually a little bit better than the odds of somebody getting dealt at four of a kind in poker. Now granted, that's rare, but it happens. If you look at a probability distribution chart, you can imagine that most things fall in this middle 90% range. But out here on the edges, you could thin out all the way to a 0.0001% probability event. One thousandth of 1% probability. That's pretty damn small. But in a system of 7 billion people, that's still 7,000 events. So the likelihood of it actually happening to you might be really small. But the likelihood of it happening to someone it's actually pretty good. So you can imagine every day these random crazy coincidences are happening to various people all around the world. It's just kind of landing on different people. And to each one of those specific people, it feels like a statistical miracle, but it's actually happening all the time. At the beginning of this video, I talked about that whole, you have a dream about somebody and then you find out that they died kind of thing. And no doubt that's as freaky as it gets. I mean, if something like that happened to me, I would just defecate, but let's just, let's just break all that down real quick. We all dream every night, so the likelihood that somebody is having a dream is pretty much 100%. And we often dream of loved ones and friends and people that we have known at some point in our life because that person has to come from somewhere, you know, in our memory banks. So the chance of having a dream about somebody that you know is pretty high. And people die every day. More than 150,000 people die every day around the world, and each one of those people have dozens, maybe hundreds of close friends, family, acquaintances, that may have had a dream the night before and may have had a dream about them. So statistically, it's pretty obvious that this should happen pretty much all the time. But when it happens to us, it feels like a statistical miracle. Our brains need to assign meaning to things. We are pattern recognition machines, and when things fall outside those expected patterns, we need some kind of explanation to explain why it happened. Some hidden force pulling the strings. When, in reality, all we're experiencing is totally normal randomness that exists in an extremely large and chaotic system. Some people hate this idea because they want there to be something that's in charge, some hidden guiding force that's, you know, making these things happen. That's comforting. It makes them feel connected to something bigger than themselves. But to me anyway, that's exactly what's so beautiful about this. If we were actually living isolated lives and bubbles and not interacting with some bigger system, these kinds of crazy coincidences would never occur. We'd never experience that but we do. We are a small part of a massive system of humanity. Random and chaotic, sure, but also interconnected and important. Crazy coincidences like this remind us that we're not alone, that we're part of something bigger, and that we have agency, that we can make things better by taking care of each other. And to me, that is what's truly amazing. All right, thanks a lot for watching. Again, if you have some kind of crazy coincidence you've lived through, I would love to hear about it down in the comments. If this is your first time here, I invite you to check out this video. Google thinks you'll like that or any of my others. And if you like them, I invite you to subscribe because I come back on videos every Monday and every Thursday. All right, you guys go out now and have an eye-opening rest of the week, and I'll see you on Monday. Love you guys. Take care.